So I think, as you know, I've been very interested in trying to understand why patients with panic disorder have so many false alarms when that system, it's useful if somebody's chasing you, but it's not useful in the grocery store. And I finally thought we needed to apply signal detection theory to this. And the bottom line, very simply, is that having a panic attack is pretty cheap, maybe 100 calories. Yep. Not having a panic attack when there's actually something behind the rock um, it might be fatal. And because the ratio is so huge, even a small sound that might be some lion ready to get you means you should run away and false alarm should be normal. That basic yep. logic still works even after your analysis, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. If, if there's a much bigger cost for one type of error than another, then you tend to bias your decision, for, for want of a better term, I'm using the word bias, uh, because the optimal behavior now is to pay that smaller cost many times more often than you would actually pay that So false huge alarms, cost. I've called this the smoke detector principle, yes. as you know. And we a, put up with yeah. false alarms on our smoke detector because we really want them to go off every time there's a fire. Absolutely, that's a, and that's a really good term for the, for the effect that, mm -hmm. um, that we, when we hear a smoke alarm, um, we really almost expect that there's not a fire these days because they go off so much more often, but it gets us out of the building. And, and so we are safe, even though it's cost us this small amount of time. And it would be a disaster for it not to go off and for there to be a fire. That's a real tragedy. So well, that's you, why well, you've elaborated this all of this, pointing out that exactly how that mechanism should be set also depends on basically how hungry you are and how, how dangerous it is not to stay around looking for your food. Is that the big idea there? Yes. Yeah, so there are, there are classic results that have been out there for over 50 years now uh, that many people have, have relied upon and believed and, and referenced in, in uh, many different fields that suggest that as the world becomes more dangerous, individuals should become more prone to avoiding that danger. Well, that seems to completely agree with intuition. It seems obvious at first. But actually, if you're in a very stable world and you find out that the danger in that world has increased, well, that means that that danger is going to have increased in the future as well. So avoiding so, it so right So it's now, the trajectory of the danger that matters. Is yes, that what you're saying? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you definitely need to do something fairly soon, like go and eat, then avoiding that danger in the short term is, is not going to help you because you've still got to get out there fairly soon before it's going to have changed. And with this mindset, we've found that actually, in, in some cases, the trends go in the opposite direction. So let's put a rabbit in a field at sunset, yep. and there are foxes around. The rabbit is hungry, it needs to eat, and it has to look up constantly to see if there are any foxes around. Yep. And the question is, how often should it look up to see if there are any foxes around. Yep. I think you've analyzed that kind of situation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one way of looking at it. So if the, if the rabbit thinks that it's in an area with relatively few foxes and, and it has a particular rate of looking around for those foxes, then when, when it actually spots a fox and the fox is just disappearing off, it, the answer will depend upon what that rabbit's expectations are of the future. If, if a fox is indicative that there are going to be other foxes around, then that's increased the probability of danger. So the classic result now is that it should immediately go and hide. That's the intuition. But if the rabbit were at very low reserve levels and it was going to soon die if it didn't get some food. Better to keep eating anyway. Better to keep eating, absolutely. So this is especially interesting. Let's now leave the number of foxes constant and only change rabbits being relatively hungry and relatively not hungry. Yeah. Should their anxiety system go off more quickly when they're more hungry or less quickly when they're more hungry? So they when when they've got lots of food, they can afford to wait to wait quite a lot of time. So they can put their head up a lot, run away easily, because they got a lot of food. Yes, and so effectively, the, the bob in the head up. If you view that as the avoidance kind of um, technique, then 
they should bob their head up a lot when they've got plenty of food. Whereas when they're really hungry, they just keep their head down and keep eating because that's what they're in desperate need of. So I've wondered at times after long days running the anxiety clinic, um, whether this might help explain why so many people have so much anxiety now. Because we, are, we have so many resources now, we don't have to worry about getting enough food. Yep. And it seems to me that in that circumstance, it's worthwhile to make the anxiety system to go off more easily because you can afford to run away and keep checking, where if you were quite hungry, you couldn't. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So clearly we did not evolve in the world that we currently face. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ease of getting food and so on, and, and, and medicines for that matter, means that the, how we respond to illness arguably ought to change quite a bit. Um, we can now afford to um, just overcome an illness kind of immediately. We, we shouldn't be waiting for, to know that there are more resources.